Tony, time for the show. What are you doing? Tony, Tony. I'm sending positive vibes to Justin Herbert's rib cartilage. Oh. We need all the positive vibes that we can get, Tony. What is up, everyone? Welcome to the newest episode of Nuts and Bulls. Please subscribe, like the video, do all that stuff that we like to do usually. Tony, I'm panicking. I have been sitting with this all week where it's like, this is not how the season is supposed to go. It's not how last Thursday was supposed to go. Uh, offensive line playing really good. And then slowly but surely, injuries start to pile up Keenan right starts with with it starts with JC in the preseason like surprise right before there then Lindsley goes out then Pipkins who's playing well goes out and then that leads to Justin Herbert getting getting a serious injury like I everybody keeps going oh yeah he's played through stuff like this but like what's the effectiveness level like what's the efficiency what's the like Yes, you can play through it. And the pass that he threw to DeAndre Carter is maybe one of the best things I've ever seen. But you got to do it for four quarters. Yeah, it's different. And his stat line after suffering the injury is 7 of 9, 73 yards, and a touchdown pass. So on track for a 400-yard game if he played a full four quarters with that stat line. But the question really seems like is going to be pain tolerance and how much is that pain going to affect his play? Like, if Herbert's out there and he takes a light shot on a completed pass, like, are we just going to lose him again, like, right there on the spot? Is it even worth the risk at that point? Well, I, I've already talked to you about this privately several times. I feel like these are the moments why you have Easton Stick still on the roster. Otherwise, I don't understand. If you know 10 days ahead of time that he can't go, you should be installing a game plan that's like heavy with run pass option using his athletic ability. And he can throw the ball a little bit. Like we saw him have some success with Josh Palmer in the preseason. So you put him out there. Now he has Mike Williams and the starting offensive line, like whatever, we don't know who's all going to be out there or not. But I, I feel like this is the reason why you have Easton stick still on the roster. You have chase Daniels for short notice to come in, to finish up a game, somebody who's had NFL experience. But if you have a full 10 days to prep, this is why Easton sticks on the roster because I don't want long-term injuries for Herbert. I want 20 years. Like what, like what the Patriots got with Tom Brady. I want healthy Justin Herbert, him first. And Staley even said that we put the players at the beginning of every decision. And sometimes I think that could be a problem because Justin Herbert is going to need to be yanked away from this game. Every game, probably, for the rest of his life, he's going to need to be yanked away in that way. Let's bury that Chiefs game real quick. We have the injury report. We have the keys to victory for you guys. Maybe a quicker episode today because we're in a tight window to record this thing, but we're going to try and get through it all. Let's bury that Chiefs game. Closing, just Let's just close the thoughts on it, Tony. Tie a bow. We lost because of the pick six. It's that simple. We Our team was better than that Kansas City team on that field. We lost because we had to play them on short notice, banged up after a Raiders game. And because of a pick six late in the game, that is a 14-point swing because we would have scored a touchdown there. Instead, they wouldn't have a touchdown. 14-point swing right there, and you lose by three still at the end, the final score. Um, let's just wrap a bow on it and close that one up. That wasn't a must-win for the Chargers. That was a, hey, let's go give our best effort. We're going to see these guys again. And that's what I was saying when Herbert was still on the field in the fourth quarter after the injury. Like, we're going to play these guys again. We're acting like this is, like, win-or-go-home situation. <laughs> Yeah, my takeaway from this game is it just the breaks did not go in the Chargers' favor. When you outplay somebody that much in a game, because both teams were on a short week. Both, you know, I wouldn't say that the Chiefs necessarily had a tough battle in week one. They played whatever the Cardinals put out there. But it's it's like all those little tiny interceptions that didn't go their way. And then the ones where there was no penalties, but they were dropped or whatever, or you know, they read it perfectly but they didn't quite execute so i think just the breaks need to go in the chargers favor and that game is probably a two-score victory yeah i think so too we go look at the stat line if you guys don't believe us the chargers led in everything time of possession 
total yards, first downs, everything. Everything that if you looked at it without the score there, you would think the Chargers blew out the Chiefs in that game. Yeah. And that's with the three interceptions being taken off the stat sheet by the referees. Two of them, I think, were kind of bullshit. But we're not going to blame the refs, I guess. But two of them were kind of bullshit. ASJs, I saw the exact same play happen in the Buccaneers game the same weekend, get called an interception. And then the holding on Bryce Callahan just clearly was on the offense. It, when you watch the replay, it's it's almost like what was the ref looking at? Did he Did he even see what happened, or did he just see a guy fall and call it on the defense? Mike, this is back to back uh, years where week two, I have last year was Tony Carrenti in that Cowboys game. Remember mm-hmm. how furious I was? He was not in the grass. Micah Parsons should not have gotten credit for that at all. Like his feet were still moving and they called him down. There was a bunch of illegal seat, uh, procedure penalties that cost them touchdowns in that game that I thought were a little, eh, I don't know if we want to throw those flags. They did back to back weeks, year two, refing still in preseason mode. Uh, although that Chris Harris pass interference week 18, what the f- come on refs, get sh- get your stuff together. Yeah. And it's been bad in all the games this year. I've seen missed calls in just about every game that I've been able to catch and watch in its entirety. And it really affected that, that chiefs chargers game. When you look at the totality of it with the interceptions and, and the stuff late in the game, but it's whatever that game's done. Bury the hatch on that game. Let's move on to Jacksonville. I'll get the injury report up here because we got a lot to talk about. Um, the Chargers line right before we went on the air moved from seven to three and a half as us being favorites because of all these injuries, I, I assume. Um, Justin Herbert, obviously, there's conflicting reports. I put that because there's people yesterday saying Herbert's throwing, Herbert's testing it out, Herbert looks good, um, you know, with a pain injection or whatever it is, the procedure they have to do to get him on the field on Sunday, he probably would be pretty close to feeling normal out on the field other than if he gets hit, of course. But now today reports are saying that things aren't looking good with the line dropping and all that stuff. So conflicting reports. He's had limited practice this week. Don't know the status on Herbert. We're recording this at around 1248 p.m. in the day. We'll probably know in the next two hours uh, what Staley's idea is for Herbert, whether or not I'm assuming he's going to say is a game-time decision. What's going on with J.C. Jackson is kind of being covered up by all the Justin Herbert news. Justin Herbert has been, or J.C. Jackson has missed practice every day this week. They said he was out on the field today, but not practicing again. Um, Staley cited that he was just uh, dealing with some general soreness, playing in the game without any kind of ramp up period. I think it was very much so. J.C. was zero one day and a hundred the next day. Of course, you're going to be sore off of that. But how bad is it? Is it going to affect his status for Sunday? Haven't got news on that either, but he has not practiced. Corey Lindsley is also dealing with a little bit of a scary injury because it's a knee injury. They were saying tinnitus, soreness, stuff that, yeah, it's not a serious knee injury, but it concerns me because it seems like something that might linger throughout the season and maybe even longer than that. Let's knock on wood, hope that he, he gets it all cleared up as soon as possible. Has not practiced this week. His status is unknown for the game as well. Keenan Allen was out at practice in limited fashion for the first time. Uh, since suffering the hamstring injury in week one yesterday, I saw the clips. He actually looks pretty crisp. Wasn't running full speed, but was running, you know, 75%, 80% and uh, looked okay. But his status is still unknown as well. They have not labeled whether he's questionable or expected to play. And then Donald Parham had a hamstring injury as well in training camp. Same thing with him. Returned to practice this week in a limited fashion and status is unknown. In case you guys were wondering, I'm not saying that I would ever want any team to go into a game injured. But just our luck, the Jaguars have no one on their injury report this week. Mike, those aren't that's just just not that's not an injury report. That looks like the start of the list all the way up to Parham of the NFL top 100. Like it looks like <laughs> all four of those guys, they're not just players, they're like cornerstones at their position. Obviously, franchise quarterback, the number one wide receiver, the big time free agent that you brought in for your secondary and your all pro center. Like that is a, that is enough to move the line. In my opinion, to make it a pick them style game. If you're going into this game with Easton stick and we saw the way the Jaguars played, I will mm-hmm. say the thing about JC is if it really was truly just a wound healing issue, I think it's probably more general soreness on the side of, Hey, I didn't play at all in the preseason. It was my first game action. I was out there going 110 percent, um, and just needed it needs a little bit extra. The Corey Lindsley thing is a little scary because of how 
intricate he is to line protections and just how great of a player he is and what he means to Justin Herbert on the field. Um, Keenan, I honestly think that Keenan is another player where it's like it might benefit him to sit down for a week. If Herbert can play, I think there's still enough receiving options on this team where every report I read from every like phys- sports therapist or whatever it is for rehabilitation, they talk about the high uh, percentage of injury, of, of aggravating hamstrings and stuff like that, especially when you start to get eight, nine, 10 years into your career. So if he could get another week, like, Keenan's that guy. We needed we need that guy. We could have used if Keenan was in the red zone last week, Herbert is going to him in that moment. And he's not there. Like Yeah, and, and think about just overall our offense and how it looked. We were moving the football. We weren't capping it off with touchdowns yet. And I think that's gonna come later on in the year. That's why I told Chargers fans to relax a little bit. We had a slow start in offense last year as well. But if you have Keenan out there, all of that doubling up Mike in the second half doesn't happen you can't do it because then we'll start going to keenan so mike would have probably had 200 yards in the game and by the way that was my uh prediction right it was like Nailed 200 it. yards two touchdowns or something almost almost yeah um man. damn man all these injuries suck to see the justin herbert thing tony I'll, I'll just ask you it's game time justin herbert's telling coach staley like i'm okay to go in you sending him out there if you're staley or are you you saying you know what you're a franchise quarterback. I'm expecting to be coaching here for a long time. We're going to let you sit this one. We're going to try and beat the Jaguars with Chase Daniel. With Keenan Allen, I think either way. Either you have Justin Herbert and just the offense is a lot better and you don't feel as you know concerned needing Keenan Allen out there. Or Chase Daniels is out there and it's like we're kind of just hoping to win this game anyways. Maybe not risk it on Keenan to throw him out there. You know, obviously going to every game, trying to win every game. But it's, it's a huge dip. Chase Daniels. No offense. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because in the last episode of All In, like Lombardi stand up in the front and he's like, now I'm going to say something here about Chase Daniels. He may think, he may take this as an insult. I don't know. But he's a short guy. He's stout. He's chubby. Not a lot of arm strength. Not particularly good looking. Doesn't smell real good. I was like, Lombardi, please stop. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> say something positive about this man. If you go back, just listen, and you will feel the uncomfortableness of that situation. I was like, that's not really a compliment. I told you, Easton Stick, I would be starting in this game mm-hmm. unless I see him out there throwing pain-free footballs, and he says, I, I got this. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to play. Because if he does play in this game, I would expect him to have a lower completion percentage than normal where it's just like, hey, first read, second read, not there, throwing the ball away. Mm-hmm. You cannot take any unnecessary hits at this moment trying to be a hero. Like, it just can't happen. So if he ends up with like a 55 to 60% completion rate, because that is the scenario where it's like he doesn't have the luxury of holding the ball and potentially taking a hit, especially if Storm Norton is out there. Uh, I know Pipkins was not on this injury report, but, you know, like, if for whatever reason he re-aggravates and Storm is out there and Will Clapp is at center, you, I, I don't even want you making it past your first read. <laughs> and if that's yeah. not open, it might be time yeah. to just check down or throw the ball away. And the, it's interesting because uh, obviously if the Jaguars, if we don't have Herbert, the Jaguars are going to come up and they're going to say, you aren't going to Eckler. You better figure it out with Chase Daniels. I mean, that would be the, the smart game plan at least. And Chase Daniels is going to have to throw balls down the field to Mike Williams for us to win this game. And let's just get into keys to victory, I guess, since we're already talking about it. Um, Chase Daniels is going to have to throw this thing down the field to Mike Williams if he's playing in this game and we're going to win this game because the Jaguars are not going to let us feed the running backs. And our running game isn't the strength of our team anyways. The defense and Chase Daniels to Mike Williams is going to have to squeak this game out. Maybe our defense just goes out there and just shuts them, just shuts them completely down, which would be the – Best situation, even if Justin Herbert's playing, get him out of there in the early fourth quarter or something because the defense went out there and held them to 10 points. The keys to victory for me, I got I got two of them. One of them, it's going to have to be the run game. Like, it just has to be 
we're going to go to more of these two tight end personnels. We're going to have a lot of Xander Horvath in there and we're going to run the football and it's going to be an ugly, ugly game. I'm, I'm saying this is without Herbert. And even with him, I still think you lean on the running game a little bit more than they have been, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the past 20 games or so, whatever it is with Lombardi, what are we, two, 17, 19 games. I, the other thing is this. I feel like Staley's game plans have been very good defensively. Offensively, everything everything needs to come together in this moment right now. And then on top of it, there has to be execution. The execution was not followed through with last week. And, and I say that is like they were in the right places, but it was either penalties or drop balls. Because Asante also had the interception in the end zone where he jumped the, the, the quick little in route or whatever it was and he dropped it. Van Noy read the route perfectly uh, on the little drag to Kelsey. He doesn't quite get there. So the Staley's defense is putting these players in positions to succeed. They just need to make sure they follow through in this game, and I believe that they will. Now on the other side, he's got to go to Joe and say, this needs to be your masterpiece. This mm. needs to be your you know, painting of the ceiling right here, whatever it is. Mona Lisa, we need this from you where it's like, call the perfect game. And, and not even this week, but it just needs to start trending in that direction where we look out there and we go, because like even before the rib injury, it felt like we were falling back into the same trap that we fell into the week against, in the week before in the Raiders game, where I was like, yeah. wait, wait, what's what's going on? What are we what are we doing here? Like, And Andy Reid made adjustments. Spagnola made adjustments. You saw them switch Chris Jones over onto Matt, oh, Matt Filer. Like, yeah. smart, way to go. Congratulations. Yeah, and uh, when it comes to the offensive play calls, we really got to focus on keeping our feet on the gas pedal because in this league, in this day and age, we are seeing teams come down 21 in the fourth quarter. It just happened. The Ravens, a good defense, blew a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter. So it's, it's going to – be something that you got to change your philosophy or whatever it is in the second half when you have a lead. You don't go in the clock kill mode anymore. That's not a thing. I know we have a defense and we believe in the defense. This is an offensive league. You can put up that insane amount of points even on a good defense with just a few blown coverages and a few pass interference penalties. It can happen. It can happen at a blink of an eye. We've been the guys that have come back on people before. You saw the Raiders game last year. We had no business sending that game to overtime. We were getting killed up until about halfway through the fourth quarter. Joe Flacco put up 14 points in about two minutes and 20 seconds. Damn, just like that. Joe Flacco. Because you let them stick within the game within 14 points. They let them stick within 14 points. They lost it because of that. So we got to we gotta be able to do that in the second half. Chase Daniel or Justin Herbert. All right, Tony, prediction for a player and then score prediction. Um, you got yours already? I don't really have one. I do. I'm going defensively on this one. And he has been playing tremendous football, overshadowed in week one by Khalil Mack. Last week, played another good game defensively. I think at home, an opportunity for Joey Bosa to come out two and a half, three sacks, another sack fumble. This one's going to result in a turnover, short field. I think just a another great game that lets the entire league know that this defense is going to be legit a problem to deal with all year because we saw how good Jacksonville played uh last week allowing no no pass rush no anything like Trevor Lawrence looked flawless that needs to be and obviously they don't have the same type of edge rushers but i think this is a big uh Joey Bosa game you know, multiple sacks, turnovers forced by this young man has has a terrific Sunday. I like it. I like that choice. I think that uh, if the Jags are watching tape right now, they're probably going to be shifting and putting more attention on Khalil Mack than Joey Bosa. That could be a huge mistake. Um, and there's no – it's like pick your poison, right? Are you going to send the running back to help on Mack's side or Bosa's side? Either way, you got a monster one-on-one -on -one with a tackle of some sort, So whether it's a good tackle – or a bad tackle. Um, I've gone this way a couple times, and I think it's especially important in this game. I'm going to go with special teams again, Tony. And I'm going to go with 
Hopkins hits all his field goals. Don't know how many we're going to need out of him. Might need a bunch for all we know if we can just get into good field position. And maybe we can get a DeAndre Carter special teams touchdown, whether it's a punt return or a kick return. That will be a huge boost to winning this game. Your percentage of winning goes up by like 25% if you score on defense or special teams. I'm going to call for it. Special teams touchdown. DeAndre Carter, punt or kick return. That is uh, my bold stat prediction. All right, score prediction if Herbert plays. Score prediction if Herbert doesn't play, Tony. Whew. Uh, if Herbert plays, I'll go to – it's not really – I'm not really going to vary it that much. Uh, I'll say if Herbert plays, 28-20. If Herbert doesn't play, we're talking 26 20. Okay. So, so like not really much of a difference. Uh yeah. I think I think that's it's not much. It, if you told me he was fully healthy, I think uh I think they're gonna hang 38. He's yeah. not fully healthy. That's not gonna be the case. So I think getting out of there with a game where he maybe has, you know, one touchdown, but this is more Austin Eckler gets going this week. Maybe mm-hmm. we see Isaiah Spiller this week. Like Let's get all three of those backs in there. Let's run the, the football 35 times. I'm going to go with the my final score prediction as 26-20. Jaguars are better than people think. I, I've been seeing a lot of people saying, we should blow the Jaguars out. I mean, this defense is f- legit up front in the front seven. Like, it is a nightmare to think, like, oh, this is the week we need to turn on the run game. And they have someone in there, a coach now, that knows how to use his star players to create mismatches. That Eagles team that won the Super Bowl that year, yeah, they went on a great run, a crazy run. They were not the stacked roster that was expected to win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the season. They were a team with some bright spots mixed in with some veterans, a lot like Jacksonville, and a young, promising quarterback. And that young, promising quarterback went off, and that's what really put them over the edge in that season. Uh, Of course, the backup had to come in at the end, but Doug Peterson knows what to do with these Jaguars. He knows how to turn this thing around. So don't sleep on them. Don't think that this is a walkover game. I'm going to give the Jaguars an extra touchdown if Herbert's not playing. I'm going to go thir- I'm going to go 30 to 13 if Herbert plays. I just think that Herbert does a better job with, with turnovers, is okay with just playing field position. I think Herbert can get through his reads about twice as fast as Chase Downs or Easton Stick if they have to go out there and play. And that leads to the charge winning 30 to 13. If Justin Herbert is out, I'm going to give the Jaguars an extra touchdown. I'm going to take a touchdown off of our column, and I'm going to go 24 to 21. Chargers still. I'm going to be at the game, so fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed that uh, DeAndre Carter has a kick return. I'm going crazy saying, I called it. Everyone's looking at me like, who is this guy? Why is he by himself, and why is he yelling like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, hopefully DeAndre Carter's family will be in the building for that. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, I, I do really think like this is one of those games for Brandon Staley where it's like great coaches win these kind of games. Tomlin wins games with Duck Hodges and, and Mason Rudolph. And, you know, Belichick wins games with Matt Castle. We won 11 games one season with Matt Castle at quarterback. Got that man a huge deal. Really good coaches win football games when their stars are beat up you know, when they're, or they're missing football games. And I just think that's kind of where we're at right now is like, coach, this one's on you defensively, special teams, all of it. Have your coaches, have their assistants. Everybody needs to be on point. There cannot be a moment in the last game where Gerald Everett taps himself out. Staley says, I saw it, but I thought we could still go for it. I still thought we could move forward again. Another decision where I'm like, Hey, do you understand? You're playing panicked right now at 1717 on the road with a mm-hmm. guy telling you he's gassed and he needs to get out of the game. And you think that the idea is to play like, oh, we have to score right. Yes, we have to score right here, but we also are in control. Let's take our time. Let's go on there. We have the best player on the field. Let's set it up and call the right can play and get the game won. So Staley needs to come through in this moment and the players need to execute on a tremendous game plan. Yeah. And to me and their head coaches in the NFL, they know more about football than me. I understand the concept of running up and running a play like that. You're supposed to be catching the defense where they can't sub 
to match something you're about to do. In that situation, they would, would be, we converted a third down. They were in a pass coverage defense. They had pat, a bunch of DBs in the field. You'd run up to the line and run the ball. That would make sense. You have a mismatch uh, with their pass coverage defense out there, their nickel defense out there. So you'd run the ball. That's the part I don't understand. Or uh, like, say, for example, it's second and nine and you get eight on second and nine. Run up and run it on third and one real quick before they sub in their stuffers. That makes sense. But what what's the reason to do it on first and goal? Even just a huddle might have given Everett enough time to catch his breath to run that play at least. He was so tired that once it got intercepted, he couldn't even like try and make a tackle. He was just down. He couldn't keep his mouthpiece in his mouth. It just falls to the floor. It just seems so desperate too. Yeah. Like you uh, you're controlling the entire game. Yeah. You know, like you've caught in a bunch of bad breaks on overturned interceptions. So now you're going to run up there at this moment and throw it to the guy who just made three plays to get you down here and was trying to get out of the game. Like I like that he owned it and he said, Hey, I saw it and I could have done this, that and whatever. And I didn't. So like, I get it. I just want to see him start having those moments where they're ending up on the other side where it's like, Hey, I realize this and this is what we did. We made this sub. We put it in our yeah, go. In, in that situation, it's 24-20, right? So field goal or touchdown. Either you score a touchdown, you're up two scores with like eight minutes left or however long is left in the game. Or you kick a field goal and you go up one score with however much is long in the game. With how your defense is playing, you'd want to run two plays at least there and run more clock. Wait, that was we were 17-17 at that point. Oh, 17-17? I'm tripping then. I'm tripping I think- then. I thought we were up. And that we I thought that we were up. They had scored to go within range because the final was 27. Oh, no, but they did hit a field goal, huh? Yeah, so they hit a field goal on the next drive. They came out. Herbert was ineffective, to say the least. Yeah. And then he was on the sidelines warming up. And they yeah, come. Re- yeah. yeah they regardless, come regardless, we're about to go up in a game against Patrick Mahomes where our defense is pretty much shutting him down. You don't necessarily want to hurry up and save time for them to to have more offensive opportunities. If anything, we're shooting for him only having one more chance or two more chances. Oh yeah. Mike, the next drive was when (laughs) Herbert got hurt was on the next, was on the next play and they were trying to come back. He's trying to create a little more time. He then gets the ball out to Gerald Everett who makes a nice move over there on the sidelines. I just, I'm not a fan of, of the hurry up in that scenario when it's that crucial of the game on the road there's no need for it. Like, go ahead, take your time, pick the exact perfect play and moment. I'm with you. I'm with you. But again, like we said, Barry and the Chiefs game. Yeah. We're on Jacksonville and eventually Houston. And hopefully by the time we get to Denver, this team is fully healthy, ready to go. And everyone's out there. Keep your eye on the news today, guys. News priority drop it. on what's going I just on. got it right here. No way. Live? Uh, Chargers will list Justin Herbert as questionable for Sunday's game. Chase Daniels took all the first team reps. I don't know what that means, Staley. This is what I was telling you before we even came on the air. Like, don't come on and give me a game time decision. If he's not ready today, he's not like, let's not throw him out there in two days. I think what's going on is, and Lorenzo Neal had an interview and he, uh, you can probably find it, Tony, after but he had an interview where he said, like, I know about this injury. A lot of players get this injury. This happens a lot. It's happened to me. He said, usually they'll test your pain tolerance throughout the week, have you do the simple motions that you'll need to do in a game and see how much it hurts without any painkillers. And if you feel like you can do it, they'll have you questionable and they'll do it again in warmups, see if you're okay, and then give you the injection, the painkillers, and then you'll go out and play the game if you feel comfortable. So is that what that's what happening with the game time decision thing where it's like he's going to get the injection and go and play? Or is it like we don't want the Jaguars to know that Herbert's for sure out of this game? We don't know either. Staley, whether this is a good strategy or a bad strategy, you're stressing the fuck out of me. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm <laughs> you just told me Chase Daniels is getting the start. That's my problem. What? Uh, my problem is Chase Daniels took all the first team reps. What I know, you? I know. You don't even want. Then why, then why do we have Easton Stick on the roster? Yeah, I think uh, Easton Stick is like the legit third stringer, but Chase Daniels is just there for clipboard 
coaching leadership. He's not there to play. Holy crap. Well, we'll see what happens, Tony. If it's Chase Daniels, go off Sneckler. We got this. Um, 20 to 24, whatever it was. What did you say? You said 21 to 13? 26 to 20. 26 20, whichever one. I'm cool with either one. We'll see you guys next week. Hopefully we'll be victorious. We'll be two and one. We will. Uh, and uh, not one and two. That's the best possible record for the Raiders. We'll see you guys next week. Hold <laughs> well up.